We have a brand new AEW TNT champion after Powerhouse Hobbs shockingly defeated former champion Wardlow last night on Dynamite thanks to outside interference from QT Marshall. We've got details on that. Brian Cage could be set to leave AEW slash Ring of Honor after his contract is set to expire and he has agreed to work with AEW up until the end of the month through the next Ring of Honor pay-per-view. We've got the latest details on his possible departure and possibly him signing with WWE. Brian Danielson says he is going home after his lost AEW Revolution this past weekend. An update on what is going to happen with the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. A huge trios title match is set for next week's edition of AEW Dynamite. The AEW All-Atlantic Championship has undergone a name change. We'll reveal that is later on in the show. FTR make their return to Dynamite after returning at Revolution and they have called out the AW World Tag Team Champions The Guns Juice Robinson attacks Ricky Starks on Dynamite has Scorpio Sky been backstage at all recently in AW? well the answer is no Ruby Soho explains her heel turn at AW Revolution Commander uh, opens up on possible interest from AW and WWE after his Dynamite debut a couple of weeks ago uh, some matches were missing from AW Dark this week we've got reasons as to why and Soraya she wants to see Women's Tag Team Championships introduced into All Elite Wrestling. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. We have to start off talking about the brand new TNT champion, Powerhouse Hobbs. Yes! The TNT Championship continues to be passed around like a hot potato, even though that allegedly was the plan. We'll get into all of it. Now, last night's edition of AEW Dynamite closed with the return of an AEW star to play an integral role in a main event title match, notably wearing a polo of the QTV graphic that has been shown previously on AEW. It seems the mystery has been solved as QT Marshall has returned to AEW programming. Not only that, but he played a massive role in ending this match as it was a chair shot from Marshall plus a little bonus lifting assistance to Hobbs to get Wardlow completely tossed off the entrance ramp. With a replacement TNT Championship belt behind him, the referee counted to 10 without a response from Wardlow, thus rendering him knocked out and losing the match. Powerhouse Hobbs is therefore the brand new AEW TNT Champion, and he celebrated with QT Marshall by his side. So we have a new champion. He's actually the first person to effectively cash in the face of the Revolution ladder match brass ring to actually win the championship, but... Yes, once again, we have a short TNT Championship reign. Of course, we've seen the likes of Darby Allen hold it for about a month. Samoa Joe hold it for a month or a few weeks. Now we've seen Wardlow hold it for just three days before a new champion has been uh, crowned on AEW programming. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comment section below. Brian Cage, what's going on with Brian Cage, the machine in AEW? Well, he could be on his way out of Tony Khan's respective promotions. Brian Cage's time in AEW could be coming to an end. Now, recently, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reported that Brian Cage's AEW deal was set to expire imminently. However, there were some hiccups uh, that Fightful Select had learned that AEW had hoped to extend his deal due to injury time that would keep him with the company until at least the end of June. However, Brian Cage pushed back on that and was interested in exploring free agency and for a good reason, which is interesting to me because that would imply that actually you can contend that. You know, previously it was we're adding time on for injury. The talent can push back and get their agents on it and say, hmm, about the injury time added on, which certainly could... Um, have some kind of precedent for the future. Now, Fightful Select has reportedly been told that WWE has maintained interest in Cage in the event that he does become a free agent and are open to, ha open to having conversations with one of the Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions at the moment. The period won't have to wait that long as Fightful have been told that AEW and Cage have agreed to work together through the end of March, specifically the Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor pay-per-view. So, I think it's fair to say that if there's a six-man tag team championship match at Supercard of Honor, there's probably going to be a title change. And it kind of does imply that Brian Cage is on his way out of AEW. Now, Fightful have been told that some of the time that was supposed to be added to Cage's contract is actually because Cage was signed while injured after leaving Impact Wrestling years ago. Those familiar with the situation claim that AEW offered Cage a contract extension comparable to his current deal, which hasn't been ruled out. So it's not completely confirmed that he's going to leave, but he's 
certainly open to exploring free agency. Originally, Cage's AEW contract was set to expire between late January and mid-February. Fightful have been told that Cage has had some heavy hitters within AEW in his corner as of late. Chris Jericho specifically spoke publicly, saying he hopes Cage re-signs with AEW and putting over his work. So... It's going to be a really interesting one, and I think this is the beginning of seeing quite a lot of this year in both companies, both AEW and WWE, so expect a lot of free agency plays this season, and Brian Cage, for now, is going to be working with AEW, and more specifically Ring of Honor, through the end of March, but after that, anything certainly is possible, so it's one certainly to keep an eye on. Brian Danielson. Yes, Brian Danielson says he's going home after his loss at AEW Revolution in that Iron Man match this past Sunday. On last night's AEW Dynamite, Brian Danielson broke his silence after his loss to MJF at AEW Revolution. In a heartbreaking backstage video that was noted as being recorded directly after the pay-per-view loss, Brian Danielson discussed the aforementioned loss in the main event. Speaking about his defeat to MGF, he noted that during the match when he didn't have feeling in one arm, he thought about the champ's dire warning about making sure Danielson couldn't play with his children. With the video featuring snapshots of Brian Danielson with his children Birdie and Buddy in the AW ring. With a dejected Danielson reflecting on the match, he stated, quote, It's time for me to go home. And how long he's going to go home for, if he's going to be coming back, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, Danielson did sign a multi-year deal with AEW, so I don't think it's a case of him never returning to AEW. But as for when he's going to be next on AEW programming, who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. Now, a bit of a spoiler warning here when it comes to the future of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships, because finally we do know what is going to happen after the tragic passing of Jay Briscoe. Of course, Mark Briscoe currently holds both Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship, so he can't be a tag team by himself, so what are they going to do? Now, set for this week's AEW Rampage, an important announcement about the future of the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. At last night's taping for Rampage, March 8, set to air on Friday, March 10, there was a major announcement about Ring of Honor. There was a segment featuring Mark Briscoe where the future of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships was announced after his tag team partner and brother, Jay Briscoe, tragically passed away. In the segment, it was announced that there would be a reach for the sky ladder match to determine the next champions. The match in question is set to occur at Ring of Honor's upcoming pay-per-view Supercard of Honor on Friday, March 31st, 2023. Also, the first team that was announced for the match is the Lucha Brothers. Now, of course, if we get any more information as to other tag teams that are going to be uh, added to this match, we'll let you know. Of course, after Rampage airs on Friday, we'll have more details, more context about it. But that is the plan. Mark Briscoe, I guess, will not be a Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion much longer. And it is going to be decided in a ladder match at the upcoming pay-per-view. Speaking of titles, a massive title match has been announced for next week's AEW Dynamite on TBS. A massive AEW World Trios title match was made for next week's AEW Dynamite in Winnipeg, featuring some of the city's finest. After a big match which, uh, with Top Flight and AR Fox, the Jericho Appreciation Society took to the ring to celebrate their one-year anniversary and make a big challenge. The Jericho Appreciation Society called out the House of Black, with Jericho describing it as the best entrance in pro wrestling, but then he got a visit from a another epic trio. The Elite instead answered the challenge with both Kenny Omega and Don Callis taking turns on the mic ahead of Dynamite's big event in their shared hometown next week. With the lights turning off, the House of Black appeared with Malachi Black announcing that if next week the teams want the titles, they can come and get them. With Brody King facing the Elite and Black and Matthews facing the JAS before the lights cut out again, coming back on to reveal they had disappeared once more. It will be a big three-way trios championship match next week in Winnipeg, yes, featuring some of Winnipeg's biggest professional wrestling stars. It's set to be a huge match. Are we going to see new champions? Well, titles have been changing quite quickly in AW recently, so anything is possible, but there's no doubt it's going to be a massive main event on next week's Dynamites on TBS. Now, speaking of titles, quite a big announcement was made last night coming out of nowhere from Tony Khan. <laughs> Shockingly, this one wasn't announced ahead of time. And as has become customary for AW Dynamite, first though, Wednesday on Wednesday nights, Orange Cassidy kicked off the show with a big title defense. He defended his AW All-Atlantic Championship against Jay Lethal. Cassidy was successful in the bout, but as the referee escorted Lethal away from the, uh, the ring, someone was lying in wait. Jeff Jarrett emerged from behind Orange Cassidy and smashed him in the knee with a guitar, while the best friends ran out to make the save. The damage was already done to the champion, but it wasn't the only thing to do with the AW All-Atlantic Championship because on last night's episode of Dynamite, Tony Khan, the AW President CEO, 
general manager, head of creative, whatever title you want to give him, appeared to make a shock announcement that one of the titles in All Elite Wrestling is going to be changing. Khan announced that the All Atlantic Championship would be renamed as the AW International Championship. Now, said international championship will be defended next week when Orange Cassidy puts it on the line against Jeff Jarrett after their run-in earlier on in the show. Now, why they decided to make that change, I'm sure we'll find out in the coming days because it will be reported by various journalists. And once we get that information, we'll let you know here on the channel. It must be said when the championship was first announced, there was some criticism about the name of the championship and frankly about the introduction of the championship saying that it wasn't needed. But it's going to be interesting to see why they decided to name it the international international championship as opposed to the all-atlantic championship certainly a curious change now speaking of revolution this past sunday we saw ftr make their return to aew as i mentioned they made their return this past sunday and last night on dynamite they also made their return to dynamite television and had a message for aw fans and the guns giving pause for the crowd to chant for jay briscoe cash wheeler went on to say that ftr could not in good conscience continue to stay home and watch the guns claim to be the best tag team in all of pro wrestling wheeler went on to call the ass boys uh, guns spoiled entitled disrespectful little asshole with Dax Howard taking his moment on the mic to say that he loves the fans and their support even though this wasn't a rah-rah babyface speech the crowd certainly couldn't be held back from their raucous cheers with Howard saying that it is time for retribution and to get even with the guns but it would be easy to just beat them they instead need to take the AW World Tag Team Championships not just for themselves but the Briscoes and all of the fans so certainly FTR are back now since their return on Sunday there's been quite a lot of conflicting information about what their future actually is following their return reports emerged that FTR were quote locked in to long term deals with AW and that their teases and disappearance from television was merely a storyline. It's worth noting that PW Insider didn't report that FTR had signed new contracts with the company, simply that they were locked into long-term deals. Now, discussing the return on the FTR with Dax Howard podcast, Dax noted that nothing has changed in regards to their status in the company and that he and Cash aren't holding anybody up for money. He said, quote, zero has changed. We got a call from Tony. This was maybe five days before the pay-per-view. I don't know. I'm just guessing. He either heard a clip. This was the podcast where the headline was i said we were ready to come back our bodies were healed we wanted to do right by business because we were contracted cash and i aren't trying to hold anyone up for money uh, we're not trying to play the game they're offering us this they're going to offer us this it's not about that money is a big factor but it's about what's going to make us happy there are a ton of options tony is on to something incredible changing the industry over the last three or four years he's done exactly that whatever you want to say he's completely changed our industry dax continued on noting that their choice will be solely on happiness weighing up both the pros and cons of aw and wwe he said for monetary gain i would never play someone especially as who i'm as close to as i am with tony especially who i was close to with hunter who i owe a lot to i would never play that for monetary gain our choice right now is strictly on happiness the pros of staying in AEW is the great schedule where I can come home and be with my family. The pros of WWE is they are number one making money wrestling company in the world. They can offer us a great deal, but I don't feel we could have the schedule like we have now. Another pro for AEW is that unless Tony changed his mind come April, we would be able to do independent bookings, great relationship with New Japan, doing comic cons and meeting our fans. In WWE, they're on a creative high right now. I think they could keep that creative high up. They are the number one wrestling promotion on top of the entertainment acts one of the top entertainment acts in the world and have proven a proven track record strictly comes down to happiness i don't want to say that report is right or wrong because it doesn't matter half the people are going to say it on twitter uh, that say i'm lying or trying to work now discussing the reports of the whole situation being a storyline dax reiterated that nothing has changed and requested fans to let everything play out come april he said quote these reports are going to say what they want and that's okay i will say nothing has changed and please allow everything to play out come april you'll be uh, be able to understand what we're doing and where we're going we have a month and 18 days left to make a decision on what we're going to do i'm not in any kind of peril as far as getting ourselves into trouble so according to dax harwood nothing's changed when it comes to ftr and their future
Now, keeping with Dynamite last night, Ricky Starks was coming off the back of a huge victory on Sunday, but now he's got a new rivalry, and the Bullet Club has once again invaded All Elite Wrestling. On Wednesday night's edition of Dynamite, Ricky Starks, fresh off his victory over Chris Jericho at Revolution, addressed fans essentially saying that his future is unclear. Much like current AEW World Champion MJF, Starks hinted that he doesn't know where he could be going next. At that moment, the Bullet Club logo appeared on the entrance stage, and Juice Robinson appeared blind blindsiding the former FTW champion, driving him face first into the canvas. This could mean a feud in AEW with Robinson and Bullet Club, or it could even mean a trip to Japan for Absolute. Starks previously wrestled in Japan for the DDT promotion. AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling are set to hold a follow-up to their popular Forbidden Door pay-per-view in June of this year. Robinson, a former IWGP United States heavyweight champion, has been a regular on AEW Dark over the past few months, most recently getting a victory over Titus Alexander. He has not appeared in New Japan since November last year. Robinson joined Bullet Club last May. His tenure in Bullet Club has taken on a new twist as his former tag team partner David Finley recently revealed himself as the newest member of Bullet Club, seemingly taking over Jay White's role as Gato's pet project. Starks just finished a feud with another infamous stable as his rivalry with Chris Jericho involved the members of the Jericho Appreciation Society so it's going to be interesting to see if this does play into Forbidden Door which lots of people are speculating that it could indeed do. Scorpio Sky, we haven't seen him in months and neither has a lot of people in AEW to be honest with you. Now former AEW TNT champion Scorpio Sky has a lot of AEW fans talking at the moment. Scorpio took to Twitter amid the ongoing discourse regarding MJF's controversial spot from Sunday's Revolution event. Of course, that's where MGF took a fan's beverage during the match, throwing it in the face of her child, which has caused a lot of debate online. Scorpio had his opinion, claiming that those defending the spot gave off small dick energy. Many people questioned why Sky would say this online when he works for the same company as MGF and shares a locker room with the AEW World Champion. As per Sean Ross Sapp of Fight for Select, Scorpio hasn't been at AEW shows in months, with him scarcely being seen at shows since he lost the TNT Championship to Wardlow last year. Sky Guy was taken out of action with an injury shortly after he lost the championship to Wardlow, with him not returning to television since. He is reportedly cleared to return to action, but is awaiting creative pitches from the company. Most recently, he was backstage at a wrestling event, but just not an AEW one. It was an Impact Wrestling event um, for a recent uh, pay-per-view, a recent Impact Plus exclusive. So it's curious what's going to happen, certainly with him. Now, Ruby Soho turned heel, didn't she, at Revolution this past weekend, and she has explained her reasons as to why. She railed against AEW fans and fat, neck-bearded, mouth-breathing trolls in a fiery interview segment on last night's Dynamite. In a scathing interview segment, Ruby Soho spoke to Renee Paquette in the ring about her alliance with Soraya and Tony Storm coming out of AEW Revolution. After the AEW Women's Championship match, when Soho clearly aligned with the duo, Soho took the mic to give her rationale. In a stunning oratory exhibition, Ruby Soho Soho held nothing back as she detailed her time thus far in AEW, as well as that of Tony Storm and Soraya. While Soho noted that AEW fans clearly were against her after she beat their fan favourite Chris Statlander, she saved her harshest words for discussing the return of Soraya, reminding notoriously fickle pro wrestling fans that they had begged Soraya to return from retirement, but then it takes a minute to begin tearing her down upon her return. And in the case there were any doubts, she hit um, the You People promo hat trick by also calling the fans... Uh, 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 falling fans, uh, fan and neck bearded trolls. Ruby then had a match against a homegrown baby, Soho's word, Sky Blue, from which she eventually emerged victorious. After the match, Soraya and Tony were going to spray paint on Sky Blue, but instead outran Soho's former tag team partner, Willow Nightingale. Instead of having a change of heart, she stood by as the pair also attacked Nightingale as the, as the segment ended after they spray painted a big L on both Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale. So certainly the heel faction in AEW in the women's division continues to grow. Now, Commander certainly impressed a lot of people with his AEW debut in the face of the Revolution ladder match last week on Dynamite. And following this breakout effort, Dave Meltzer reported in the Wrestling Observer newsletter that the 24-year-old was also on WWE's radar. In a new interview with Sports Illustrated, Commander said he is humbled by the interest he is receiving from major wrestling companies in the United States. He stated, quote, It's very humbling to hear that people want to know where I'm going next. That is a huge honor to be spoken about in such a manner. I came from nothing. I had absolutely 
absolutely nothing. I did this because it's what I love to do. Now, SI.com indicated that WWE has already reached out to the Luchador before his appearance on last Wednesday's AEW Dynamites. In the Wrestling Observer newsletter, Meltzer reported that Commander is actually currently under contract with the Chaos promotion in Mexico, and it's currently unclear how this would impact his ability to sign elsewhere. If we get any more updates on his status, we'll, of course, let you know. Now, AEW Dark this week caught a few people by surprise because certain matches that were advertised just didn't end up happening. Now, after being confused by her match with Diamante not making the final edit of this week's Dark, former AEW Women's World Champion Riho took to Twitter to assure her fans that the match will likely be airing next week, saying, quote, I'm sorry if you've been looking forward to, the, to me versus Diamante's match, Rio wrote, but I think it'll be aired next week or something, so please wait patiently. And Rio and Diamante's match, taped during the late February tapings of Dark at Universal Studios, was advertised for this week's episode, but ended up not making the final edit. In fact, five advertised matches were absent from the final cut of this week's episode of the YouTube exclusive program, an unusually high number of cut matches. And the reason why? I don't know, because... There's not really an issue when it comes to time constraints. They're not usually an issue of AEW Dark. It's had run times vary from 40 minutes to over 90 minutes. Now, Riho returned to AEW in October after a five-month absence, having uh, since made appearances on Dynamite and Rampage. Diamante has been a stalwart of AEW Dark and Dark Elevation since first wrestling for the company in January of 2020 and recently challenged Jade Cargill for the TBS Championship at AEW Grand Slam. So... I guess the match will probably arrive next week, <laughs> maybe on AW Dark. Finally, speaking of the women's division, Soraya, we spoke about Soraya earlier. She wants to see it expanded. She wants to see specifically AEW Women's Tag Team Championships. Now, of course, one of the most constant and consistent criticisms of All Elite Wrestling is the lack of screen time for the women's division, despite touting one of the most stacked rosters in the business. In general, whilst an overstuffed AEW Dark or Dark Elevation card may feature a number of female competitors on YouTube, the promotion's flagship broadcast, Dynamite on TBS, will usually feature one women's match per week. But Soraya seems to have a solution to highlight more of the company's talented performers, Women's Tag Team Championships. In a response to AEW's tweet celebrating International Women's Day, the inaugural NXT Women's Champion suggested that the perfect way to celebrate would be to bring in women's tag titles. A fan replied by saying women barely get one match on AEW TV, but Soraya argued that the addition of these titles would be a solution to the problem. Quote, that would open the door for more matches, she responded. We are fortunate enough to have a lot of great women's wrestlers on our roster that could be used in a tag division. Now, this isn't the first time that Soraya has advocated for a change in the AW Women's division. When she first arrived last September, that was her entire motivation for signing with the company. Shortly after that, she suggested tag bout, quote, I don't think we should load wrestling with a ton of championships, but there is space for a women's tag division too, Soraya said previously. There are a lot of women we have backstage that are not on the show, and that could give them an opportunity. Now, with all partnerships forming in AEW with the likes of Soraya, Tony Storm, and Ruby Soho, maybe this is a possibility, but frankly, you don't need championships to feature talent on programming and I've said this a million times what you need is the want to do it if you want to feature the woman on television you can do just that ratings be damned they can go down a little bit but it's 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 a chicken and egg scenario you might not have the ratings initially but you have to give your audience a reason to care and frankly Tony Khan and AEW hasn't really given the audience a reason to care enough for the ratings to really shoot up it was the same with WWE when they really started transitioning to featuring women's wrestling more on the WWE main roster ratings went down for a bit and people went into the segments initially but they gave the audience a reason to care that's the situation, in my opinion. But there you go, guys. That's the latest AEW news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Remember, you can join the WN365 roster by clicking that join button. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.